Oh yeah. What is up everybody? Happy Memorial Day. This is your local redneck coming at you from Buckeye, Arizona. And uh, yeah, I was finally able to get the uh, the Cold Waters Epic Mod installed. And uh, it's looking pretty good. Uh, about 30 minutes ago, got this installed, been testing it out, seeing how it runs, all that kinds of good stuff. And uh, I was kind of shocked when I could actually grab a ballistic missile submarine. Now, check this out. So, I want to start this one. So, let's go to. I don't want that one. I want to go to the Ohio class, and they do have. Ethan Allen, George Washington, okay, some of our forerunners. There she is, that's the one I want. Not a bad little model. I did a pretty good job modeling it. It's not completely 100% accurate, but it's still pretty good. I'm turning the sound down just a little bit. Okay, so this is the Ohio class, uh, made in 1984. Uh, folks, uh, in the heyday of the Cold War, we actually deployed 14 of these ships. We had 14 Ohio class ballistic missile submarines. Now today, um, obviously that number's shrunk down because of budget cuts and the fact that there's no Cold War. As a matter of fact, I think the original USS Ohio uh, was converted to like a special operations boat, like for like Navy SEALs and doing all kinds of like spec ops and stuff like that. I read, and I got I got to figure out where I read that. It was a long time ago, but I guess what they did was they offloaded all the the Trident uh, missiles and converted the launch tubes. You know, into like special ops stuff where like Navy SEALs can launch their uh, little uh, underwater like vehicles and stuff like that. I mean, I heard that. I don't know if it's true. Um, if you guys can find that out, please let me know. But I think I could have sworn I read something like that. Like the original uh, USS Ohio was actually converted because she was so old. They're getting ready to decommission her anyway. So. But anyway, at the heyday, we had 14 of these submarines, and I don't know what the actual number of active subs is now, but the ones that are, and the ones that are carrying the Trident D2s and uh, are still a nuclear deterrence for the nation, they're very powerful. If you actually look behind the sail, this is the missile battery right here, and you see these little guys right here? These are doors. Every Ohio class submarine was designed to carry 24 Trident missiles. Now, in the game, you're only carrying, uh, it's the UGM 96 Trident 1. Okay, so this is the older version of the missile in the game, but uh, still very powerful. Very powerful. Had a range of well over 4,000 nautical miles, could reach speeds of up to Mach 19. That's right, folks, Mach 19. These missiles get going, okay? But what makes these missiles very deadly is the fact that every missile has eight independent warheads that could be multiple targeted, independently targeted, and each warhead on these missiles was roughly around the 100 kiloton nominal yield, okay? It basically, what that means, uh, one of these warheads makes Hiroshima look like a picnic. One of these warheads, just one, is five, ten times more powerful, okay? It's more like a tactical nuke. It's not like a big city buster or something like that, but a 100 kiloton weapon, that's gonna wake you up. The fact that the, uh, the Ohio class ballistic missile submarine was designed to carry 24 Trident missiles. Each missile had eight independent warheads that were independently targetable. You could you could select a, a multitude of targets. That's a 192 warheads, folks. 192 warheads. Let that sink in for a minute. So just one of these submarines was capable of launching more firepower that has ever been released in the history of war. 
to quote Gene Hackman out of the movie Crimson Tide when he's given the speech to the crew of the USS Alabama when he sits there in the rain and he says, we are more capable of launching more firepower than, than has ever been launched in the history of war. He was pretty correct on that. It was just a movie, but he was damn correct on that. And we had 14 of these submarines back in the heyday. So even if you cut that down the half with today's budget cuts and politics and all that stuff, that's still a lot of warhead, folks. That's what makes the Ohio-class ballistic missile submarine the most survivable leg in what we call our nuclear triad. Now, the nuclear triad is basically America's nuclear arsenal. We have our land-based uh, ICBMs, the Miniman 3s, the Miniman 2s, uh, that are in the silos, like in Wyoming and in other desolate places in the country. Uh, we also have our long-range bombers, the B-52s, the B-2s, the B-1s that can carry nuclear ordnance. That is another leg of the nuclear triad. But the problem with that is, your land base silos and your aircraft can be easily taken out by a counter strike of nuclear warheads or fighters or just whatever. These guys, these guys right here, this was our final leg and it was probably the most survivable. It really was. And, uh, I mean, it, it's, 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 it's kind of chilling to talk about that because, you know, I know we're just playing a video game, folks, but these models represented in the game, the, the tactics and stuff is real. Okay, we didn't build Ohio class submarines just to cruise around and say, hi, we're here. We were loaded with missiles as a first strike or a retaliatory, you know, strike option, you know, and that it, it's, it's just, it's hard to, uh, it's really hard to fathom that. Uh, you know, a lot of people that served in the Navy, especially in the silent service, the submarine force, uh, you know, if you were stationed on a boomer, which is the nickname for this boat, you know, yeah, you got the training, you're trained to do what you need to do, you're trained to do your job, but if that, if those orders ever came in and you had to authenticate and it was an authenticated launch order, I mean, I, can, I, I can't even imagine what would be going through people's minds because the minute these guys fire off, that means something really bad has happened in the world. And you could basically kiss your family and your life goodbye because that's it. There, there is no coming back from this. This, folks, is an Armageddon weapon. Just like the Typhoons and the Delta Threes, Delta Fours, this is what we built them for. It was a counterbalance. So, anyway, enough uh, yakking. So, in the game, we are equipped with the Trident C1, the older version. So we're going to do that. I'm going to show you how you launch a ballistic missile strike. Con, sonar, new contact bearing. One, two, eight. Designated Sierra, one. Yeah, you know, we got a submarine out there. Con, sonar, new contact bearing. One, four, three. Designated Sierra, two. Yeah. Con, sonar, new contact bearing. Zero, eight. Six. Designated Sierra three. Okay, so we're gonna come up the periscope deck. One seven die by. Now it it would be cool in the game, the epic mod, if you could launch like a low frequency buoy, you know, so you could pick up radio traffic. Because being on a a, a boomer like this you're not really going to be near the surface. You're not going to you're you know, you're not going to go to periscope depth a lot. You're not going to put up a radio antenna. You're not going to put up your periscope or your your uh, ESM mass. You're, your job is to stay deep, to stay quiet and to stay hidden because you are carrying a nuclear arsenal. That was the whole point. To not be found, you know. But unfortunately in the game they they don't do that. So, we're just going to simulate so we're going to come up to Periscope Death. I'm going to put up a radio antenna and we're going to listen for orders. We're going to see if we heard anything. Now, in real life, you would never do this. You would either launch a buoy, extremely low frequency uh, ELF buoy, which would pick up uh, 
satellite uh, communications, anything that would tell you what your alert status is on the boat. Uh, are you going to launch something? Uh, what's our DEF CON status? You know, that kind of stuff. All the orders that the CEO and the XO are going to get, the WEPs, you know, you know, everybody on the sub. All right, so I'm going to come up here. We're going to level out at 17 meters. Yeah, I think we are. All right, so we are on a course of 045. We're maintaining five knots. We are at periscope depth. We have an enemy contact to our starboard. Let's go ahead and put up a... Let's put up our radio. Raise the ESM mass. So let's just pretend. Okay, I got my radio mast up. We're listening for signals. Or we want to listen to anything coming up through uh, our command. Con, dive at one seven, dive by. All right, so we got that. Let's just say we got it. And, you know, it's probably not accurate. You know, I'm not a I'm not a submariner. <laughs> you know, but. Let's just say, okay, we got orders. CSM mass. Now they're going to crack open the safes and they're going to, you know, the XO and the CEO are going to take their respective keys out. They're going to open the safes. They're going to crack their authenticated cards and then they're going to match up the codes. It could be Alpha, Bravo, Tango, Foxtrot, whatever. But if, if both cards match and it matches. Con Sonar, Sierra 1 is classified as submerged submarine. Yeah, good for him. So the ELM comes in, the radio traffic comes in, and it's a launch. It's a launch order, and it's going to have a set of codes. It's going to be like A B H E A F, whatever, whatever command, whatever strategic command is going to send you. Then you're going to crack open the safes, pull out the authenticators. You're going to crack them open. It's just like in the movie Crimson Tide. They did it really good. And you're going to match those codes. Now, if those codes match what's coming on that paper, you have an authenticated order to launch. So let's just say we got that. So we have orders to launch a strike, and we are gonna do that right now. We're gonna put the ship at hover. There is no hover option in the game, so we just kinda drop her to zero. Main turns for zero knots, maneuvering eye. I, I, you know, and like I said, folks, I, I, this is just a game, and we're just having some fun, but in real life, I, I can't even begin to imagine what would be going through, you know, the, the, the captain, the XO, the WEPs, the COB, everybody in the control room because you're going to hear what's going on i mean if this ever happened i mean your life's over it's over i mean your family's gone everything you know is gone because if we're launching that means they launched already or they're getting ready to launch back so it's this is this is the ultimate uh the ultimate doomsday armageddon weapon folks but these are what these boats were designed to do so let's simulate a launch Stinger man pads, we don't need that. We're not gonna launch stingers. What we are gonna launch are these guys. Back her up just a little bit. Simulated strike. Fire VLS. Fire VLS. Launch the wall. We got a target package. Fire VLS. Fire VLS. Fire VLS. Fire VLS. And there they go. Fire VLS. Fire VLS. We got a launch, save 10. That's our orders. Fire VLS. Fire VLS. Fire VLS. Fire VLS. And the missiles are out. Welcome to Armageddon, folks. There they go. Up into the atmosphere, stratosphere, they're gonna go in the orbit, blow their first stage, and then go to their targets. 
It's time to get the hell out of here. So we launched all that. Now let's get the hell out of here. We gotta go. Because we just made all Main kinds of noise. Five knots. Maneuvering eye. Make depth. One, five, two, die, bye. And that's it. That's how they do it. Making turns for five knots. Now, if you come up to launch depth, you hover, you fire off your missiles, everything's good. You got good trajectories, everything went right. Now you gotta get the hell out of here. I still have 10 missiles. Sierra, one is cavitating. Yeah, he's cavitating because he knows I'm here. He's right here. Can't really see him. But we just made all kinds of noise. So what we're gonna do, folks, we're gonna get the hell out of Dodge. After you launch these missiles, if you're not destroyed already, Get out of here. Go deep. Go deep. And that is exactly what we're going to do. We're going down. We're going to dive. Mid depth. Two, two, nine. Dive by. We're going down 1,200 feet e easily. I'm gonna make it roughly, I'm gonna shoot for 365 meters. Con sonar, Sierra 3 is classified as merchant. Man, I can only imagine what's going through the mind of that crew right now. They launched off their, they, they carry out their orders. They launched their target package. Now they're getting the hell out of here. You know, I, I, I like I said, I, I, I can't, I can't even imagine, I can't even begin to imagine what's going through everybody's mind on that ship right now because holy shit, you know what I mean? That's it, and that's what these ships were designed for, folks. They were designed to cast off with their crews. Whether it be blue or gold, they had two crews. They'd be gone three months and then rotate, and then three months and then rotate. But in a time of war, you know, you're kind of throwing that out the window. You go with the crew you got. Um, and then you'd head out into your patrol box, go deep and go silent. You'd never come to the surface unless it was an absolute emergency. You would never do anything like that. You would stay deep. You would follow your pre your your, your uh, predetermined course, your little patrol box, and uh, you'd wait for orders. That's what you did on these boats. I mean, I you know, life on a submarine was probably kind of you know dull and 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 kind of lonely. But imagine being on a Trident, being on a Boomer, Ohio class. You know, you just got to be quiet. That's all you do. You stock quietly. Who is this guy? Oh, he's a little... We don't want your merchant. Hey, merchant, do you just realize I launched all these ballistic missiles? <laughs> Probably not. So he's up there. Con, dive at 229. Dive by. We're still going. Alright, so now we're going to rig the ship for ultra quiet. And we're just going to get the hell out of here. Rick ship. So yeah, welcome to the Epic Mod. Um, you can actually launch ballistic missile submarines, now, uh, or the missiles, but unfortunately there's no real targets, there's nothing you can really hit with it, but I think it's it 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 it's very interesting, and I, I like the fact that you're able to do that in the game because it, it you know it allows you to you know think about that for a minute. I mean, my God, if that ever happened, I mean, what kind of work? I mean, the world's over, guys. It's over, <laughs> and uh, it just goes to show the uh, the power and the magnitude of these ships. Not only our side, but the other side too. The typhoons, the deltas. You know, China's got them now. We got the uh, Great Britain's got them now. Just the the sheer power of these weapons 
on the submarine. 24 Trident missiles. 8 MIRVs per missile. That's 192 warheads. One ship. One ship. That's why the Soviets desperately with Alphas and Akulas and Victor 2s, Victor 3s, anything they had were desperate to track us because they knew the power of the submarine. You know, it's really crazy. But anyway, no real action. We're just going to launch off some missiles. I want to show you how that works. And, uh, you know, well, uh, I could get into a dick dragon right now with these guys, but I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a bus. <laughs> it's really not a fast attack submarine, but I'm sure the Ohio could hold its own, but it'd be awfully tough. So there she is, the Ohio class ballistic missile submarine in her element, deep and dark. That's what you do. So let's get out of here. All right, folks. Well, like I said, welcome to the Epic Mod. I'm going to have some fun with this one. And, uh, you know, I was really happy to be able to talk a little bit and show you that, uh, that submarine and, and, and uh, the, 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 the lethality of that boat. So, anyway, peace out.